How can you solve the almost impossible chessboard puzzle? If you like my video, feel free to do nothing. Just grab a cup of coffee. And enjoy. I'm not going to show any solution to, the, to this puzzle. I just want to record my own reasoning uh, towards a possible solution and see what kind of tools I have in my tool bag to solve this kind of puzzles. So let's listen to the problem and see what the puzzle is actually about. You walk alone into a room and you find a chessboard. Each of the 64 squares has a coin sitting on top of it. And taking a step back, this is going to be one of those classic prisoner puzzles where a strangely math-obsessed warden offers you and a fellow inmate a chance for freedom, but only if the two of you solve some elaborate scheme that they've laid out. In this case, what they've done is carefully turned over each of the coins to be heads or tails according to whatever pattern they want it to be, and then they show you a key. They put that key inside one of the chessboard squares. Each square is a secret compartment or something like that. So you know where the key is. And the goal is going to be to get prisoner number two to also know where the key is. But the only thing that the warden allows you to do before you leave the room is to turn over one and only one of these coins. At that point, you walk out, your fellow prisoner walks in, and with no information other than the set of heads and tails that they're looking at, which you've only barely tweaked, they're supposed to deduce where the key is hidden. Wow, what an intriguing puzzle. It seems impossible, doesn't it? At first my brain just draw a blank. I mean, flipping one coin doesn't change anything, does it? At, not to say reveal anything about where the key is. But the only thing that the warden allows you to do before you leave the room is to turn over one and only one of these coins. Then it occurred to me that at least what's in your control is to change the number of heads and tails on the board. So, for example, if you count the heads and tails on the board and you find that the heads are less than the tails, you can, by flipping a coin, ensure that the key is under a heads coin. And then you agree on a strategy with prisoner number two that prisoner number two should search the key under a coin that there are less of than on the board. But then, of course, you can only control the probability that prisoner number two will find the key. You can't actually tell prisoner number two exactly where the key is. Uh, if you treat the heads and tails like zeros and ones, you can define something like a parity bit. So, for example, if we treat heads like ones, the first row here has four heads, which should mean that it's, it's even parity. And here we have three heads, so this row has odd parity. So, by flipping a coin, we can change the parity of the whole board, or we can change the parity of a row or a column. And we notice that we can change the parity of the diagonals. And the upside of the diag diagonals is that there are only two diagonals, so they are special. So if we can control the parity of the diagonals, maybe we can convey some information that way. The extreme case where the, the starting board is all heads or tails is interesting because uh, then we can't use the parity bit flipping because flipping a coin will always uh, change the parity of the board or any row or column where the, the flipping occurs. But then, of course, if it's all heads or tails, the strategy could just be that prison number one flips the coin where the key is, and prison number two will easily spot the flipped coin and locate the key. Another extreme case is where there are exactly uh, equal count of heads and tails on the board, and the heads and tails are totally randomly distributed on the board. I, my first hunch is in that situation the prison number one can change the parity of the board or the parity of a column or a row or one of the diagonals. But I can't see any way of conveying any information about where the key is. But the only thing that the warden allows you to do before you leave the room is to turn over one and only one of these coins. At that point, you walk out, your fellow prisoner walks in, and with no information other than the set of heads and tails that they're looking at, which you've only barely tweaked, they're supposed to deduce where the key is hidden. 
potentially winning freedom for the both of you. As is typical with these puzzles, the two of you can strategize ahead of time if you want, but you won't know what the specific layout of heads and tails is. And moreover, the warden can listen in on your strategy and do their absolute best to thwart it with some adversarial arrangement of the coins and the key. Here my hunch is that we can possibly game the warden. I don't know how, but it's part of this puzzle that the warden will listen in on the strategy that prisoner number one and prisoner number two is agreeing on. And then the warden will try to uh, flip the coins on the board to counteract this strategy. So if we somehow can game the warden to, to arrange the board in a certain way, then perhaps we can come up with some form of communication strategy that enables us to communicate where the key is. The diagonals are special. So for example, a strategy could be to uh, check the parity of this diagonal. Then prisoner number one can always flip a coin and ensure this um, parity of this diagonal is, is odd or even. And then prisoner number two can check the uh, parity. And if it's odd, it means something and if it's even, it means something else. Flipping a coin on the diagonal will change the parity of the diagonal. But we can't flip any of the coins on the diagonal. This means we can choose also what column and row we want to change parity of. Uh, so potentially we can actually affect three bits of information with one flip coin. Uh, we can change the parity of the diagonal and we can change the parity of uh, the column and row that this coin belongs to. Uh, this is as far as I'm uh, able to think about this problem at this stage. So I'm going to end this episode now and perhaps come back if I have any more tools that enables me to solve this problem. So to sum up, I've Observe that you can change the parity of the diagonal and then optionally also of a row and a column. And we can game the warden to arrange the board in some specific way that actually enhances our ability to convey for prison number one to convey to prison number two where the key is. So let's stop there and I wish you all the best of luck solving this problem. And Possibly I will come back if I have any more tools to attack this problem and uh, tell you if I actually solved it because so far I haven't. So thank you for watching and see you next time. If you like my videos, feel free to do nothing. Just grab a cup of coffee. And enjoy.